as promised i have decided to come back with one more video with that same irritating background but i think that you will have to live with it because there is no other spot in this house which i find comfortable to record so you know i would like to bring that issue itself is something that is worth you know thinking about in terms of our journey into understanding viruses and information further so i posted that video which i don't think was very stupid but it that kind of video do you think it can ever go viral the truth is that anybody who attempts such subjects knows that those kind of videos will never go viral compared to say you know kim kardashian's uh, intake on a beach so this is one very very crucial dimension of informations that and you know and also viruses that will come to at a later point but as i promised you know we have to just uh, visit couple of viruses which are you know of of a great interest of mine see i got interested in viruses probably because i live in a city which i think is a ticking time bomb for the humanity itself so i am from amdabad and uh, amdabad is on the tropics it is on the edge of a desert now very few indians understand actually that large part of india is actually aligned with no other nation in the world but maybe sahara desert and some little bit of southeast asia so we are may probably the only land mass of this scale and this population sitting on tropics and that means we are a laboratory of viruses that can be doing wonderful things by interacting with us so one group of virus that is of great interest of mine are arboviruses the viruses that are carried by insects so there is a very complication complicated relationship that exists between hosts and uh, you know parasites there is also one theory that that is maybe the way the entire you know life on earth is structured that the concept of symbiotic relationships is not really you know very very meaningful but if we look at the situation that we have in a tropical city like amdabad there is an obsession that humanity has with water and that is why we have a large number of insect population in terms of mosquitoes and with mosquitoes come some wonderful viruses so you know we can look at the larger pathogens which are plasmodiums they are interesting they are very very complex but i would stick to the there's a couple of viruses which are riding the mosquitoes in amdabad so predominantly story of dengue because it also gives you me one more opportunity to explore one more dimension of viruses and you know that is their vertical transmission so if you look at amdabad we have a mosquito called aedes aegypti that has that itself is a very very beautiful story worth looking at regarding the way life on earth operates so aedes aegypti comes from obviously it comes from egypt but obviously not an originally an egyptian mosquito even today you have cousins of that is egypti found in uh, sub saharan africa so it's a forest dwelling mosquito and that mosquito had to adapt to a lifestyle where it lays its eggs on the tree hollows where there is very little amount of water so it is a, it's an extremely efficient mosquito which already had very little you know requirement in breeding small bit of water in a tree hollow and it would breed now fate would have it as always and you know sahara got formed and some sahara got formed very recently less than 1 lakh years if i'm not mistaken so some small population of it must have got caught in the upper part of sahara the egyptian part and uh, then there was no trees and no you know tree hollows and forest and also the mosquito must have had to adapt to human habitation so human habitation is got water that is what mosquito wants but it's slightly different kind of uh, you know water than what you would find in the tree in a tree hollow nobody is going to use that water nobody is going to go and empty that water that is in a tree hollow but in a human habitat people will keep using the water people will keep throwing the water away so if you are an insect laying eggs eggs inside any any container of water you got to be very careful because your eggs could straight away get thrown in the uh, dust if somebody empties the water so first interesting thing that edis egypti does is that it does not lay eggs floating in the water like anopheles or culex they both have very wonderful long stories which i can't take right now so it has found a brilliant solution of sticking the eggs on the side of the container now the devil is in the detail nature you know how how deeply 
you know self evolving systems can work out solutions so if you say if you are sticking the eggs on the side of the container where would you stick them you would say you would stick them where the water is but adhesivity does something else it sticks the water eggs slightly above the water line now what does that mean that means that those eggs will come activated only when water is added to the container so this is a additional safeguard that the mosquito has that its eggs are now going to be activated when there is going water not used but added but even there it's a very very dangerous way of living because obviously humans are very we consume water very regularly so adhesivity adhesive has kind of you know developed a very very deep understanding of this and uh, it has somehow managed to stay with us the pre, pre, uh, there are various predictions about it moved across the world one is that it you know through the slave ships it went to caribbean and then went to east asia and then came to india whatever is but india has them uh, there is one more uh, you know casino of it in uh, south east asia that got also that also evolved on a similar line but short story we have adhesive gypsy in large numbers in our cities today now adhesive gypsy is a very very you know preferred vector for lot of uh, arboviruses but the one which we would talk about is dengue so dengue is has adhesive gypsy as its host that it is to use to you know exploit humanity now you know the story of mosquito itself is also very tragic because you know it's not really probably the viruses that have done it but most probably plasmodiums that have done it but lot of mosquitoes have a, a deal of that kind that they have to be on a suicide mission when they breed so you know typically an egg egg of, of a mosquito gets formed with the help of you know blood the iron so a female mosquito has no option but to go and suck blood you know to form eggs to be successful in uh, you know procreation so it's a it's a kind of suicide mission because obviously drinking egg means you could blood means you have to go somewhere to an animal and suck it and obviously that animal is not going to like it but they are forced to have this behavioral adaptation that means that something that is you know very very unique about viruses pathogens that we'll discuss later that there is a change of behavior induced in the host now these are very long evolutionary processes but the dengue virus has also had to adapt to the shortfalls or shortcomings of the adhesive gypsy's lifestyle so what is an uh, typically an uh, you know mosquito's lifestyle so mosquitoes are basically till we didn't really invent this big water bodies etc they had to depend on the natural arrival of water which is monsoon so typically post monsoon you have large population then you know their population starts declining and you know by the end of uh, say winter and say, typically by the end of the next summer before the monsoon their population is extremely reduced so you have very small seed population from which they breed again so that means that they also have a quality of breeding in exponential numbers in a very short time so now you have a you know overall picture of a mosquito with a certain kind of lifestyle and a virus that is going to use it as a host so that means that uh, dengue virus is a challenge it is using a vector that is short lived that po its population is also always dwindling it is not a very very comfortable safe situation to be in and what it has done is something very interesting so you know there is one more the technicalities about mosquitoes that we have to understand and we have to thank them for it is that that we you know if you read books and all there is a tendency to call mosquitoes uh, flying syringes you know we imagine that they are sucking blood out of another one person and you know biting another and parasites are moving no that is not the way parasites move between person to person using mosquitoes so there is a very big technological breakthrough that a parasite has to make if it wants to become use uh, mosquito as a vector so what mosquito is doing when you are biting you is that he is inserting uh, you know first a kind of scissor like part of his body to you know cut the skin then he is into, you know there is one more tube he is inserting through which he is, in, he is putting his saliva inside your body and there is a separate tube for uh, sucking the blood so the infection from the blood can't directly come into the host there is uh, this is a, this is a nice limitation that mosquitoes have so every 
pathogen which has to use a mosquito as a vector has to somehow find a way that the minute it reaches the gut of a mosquito it has to so mosquito now becomes its host it has to find a way to travel to its salivary gland so what first breakthrough that malaria had was that that plasmodiums could manage to infect the mosquito and infect the salivary gland and through the saliva you can they come into your body again in your malaria so same technological breakthrough has been you know managed by dengue so what dengue does is that obviously the the host mosquito has dengue viruses in its saliva because it can manage to go to the salivary glands but the story of dengue doesn't stop there they also travel to the germ cells so you know this thing is going on about you know maybe zika virus that you must have heard about or you know that the viruses insert themselves in the you know in the genome of the host species etc in the in the case of dengue this process is actually insertion of dengue virus into the egg of the mosquito so now you know the mosquito itself is not the vector it's not the only vector the eggs become future vectors that uh, you know the mosquito can uh, the virus can use so what has happened now is that that you have a mosquito which can now breed ready to you know spread dengue mosquitoes this is one adaptation which is very very adaptation which is very very you know big very very technically very critical i'll i'll explain to you why it is technically very critical because you know we will come to that other subject very shortly but what now dengue has to do is that this is not safe enough because dengue's uh, the mosquitoes eggs are also you understand are living they have a very precarious fate so what dengue has managed is that that these eggs are far more hardy hardy in the sense that uh, it is if the egg would survive for a very long time without water it will get activated the minute water is added into the container and you know even if there is no water for five, even 3 4 5 6 months dengue does not get discontinued so typically there is a possibility that a virus like in corona or you know a lot of influenza viruses we hope that summer comes and wipes their populations down and they become extinct in case of dengue that does not happen so that is one thing that we will remember but we will move to another adaptation that it has which is even more deadlier so if you look at